This was home to one of the densest populations of grizzly bears in California. And you'll find the grizzly on the flag of California today, but you won't find any more in the wild because the last one was also killed near here in 1908. The Santa Ana Mountains are a rugged and wild place. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to hike to its highest point, Santiago Peak. Holy fire in Riverside and San Bernardino counties is growing fast. This fire more than doubled in size overnight, Sharon. So an aggressive attack continuing uh, today. And you can see some of the fire. I have not been able to do this hike for years. This used to be a regular hike for me. There was a massive fire here called the Holy Fire and it took over a month to put the fire out. It's been closed since then. It recently opened up. So we're gonna hit the Holy Drim Trail. We're gonna hike up to the highest point here in Orange County, California, uh, the top of Saddleback Mountain called Santiago Peak. And we're gonna check the trail out. I don't know what the condition is. It could be overgrown, it could be not there. Who knows, we'll see, but along the way, I'll show you how to do this hike. If you stick around to the end, I'll show you the logistics of doing the hike, but in the beginning here, I'm gonna show you the trail. If you're liking the video, if you can give me a thumbs up, I appreciate it. But anyway, let's hit the trail and uh, see if it's even there still. Now the road to the trailhead is half of the adventure. There's some water here now. Usually it's dry, but it is a dirt road and you're gonna be best off with a four wheel drive or high clearance vehicle, but you can pick your way through on a low clearance vehicle and I've seen Priuses and all kinds of cars here. When you see the firehouse here, the Holy Jim firehouse, right past that is the parking lot. Now this is not the official trailhead, but there is a trailhead board here. So check that out, make sure there's no notices there. And then just go ahead and start the hike behind it here on this little dirt road. Now we're gonna walk up through an area of cabins and you'll see it's pointing you to the trail right in the beginning here, but we're gonna go through this area of cabins. And these cabins are on land or they're leased from the National Forest and they're private, so don't go in there, don't take anything, but you can check them out. And after about a half a mile, we're gonna to get to the official trailhead here. You can see Cleveland National Forest. And this is where all the mileages that you're gonna see a little bit later on the hike are starting from. We're gonna hike up along Holy Jim Creek. And like I said, there's water in here now, but usually there's not. And you're gonna go back and forth following the creek upstream. Occasionally I've seen this raging, but it's very, very rare. Uh, normally you can pick your way across and there's a little bit of a trickle in there. You're also gonna see evidence of the fires. This is all brush that was cleared, dead brush by people working on the trails, volunteers, national forest, and you'll also see signs of life. These are called California bells and they'll usually appear in a forest uh, fire disturbed area. Great for pollination, great for the bees, but if you look up on the hills, you definitely will see some burn scars. Not pretty, but it is slowly recovering. After about a mile of heading upstream, there'll be one last crossing and you'll see it goes sharply uphill and you're gonna come to a junction. Now there's a little waterfall to the right, but we're gonna go to the left up towards Main Divide Road, which is where the uh, summit is. That's where we're gonna head up to the summit. And you can see it's already starting to go uphill a little bit. And I mentioned that official trail uh, start before. Here's the one mile marker, and that's the mile marker from that second trailhead. All right, once we pass the one mile sign, it's a climb up to Main Divide Road. Now, it's not too tough. It's definitely uphill. It's definitely a bit of a grind, but it's all really gradual. It's graded real well. There's switchback. So once you get in the groove, it's not too bad. So just pace yourself, get going, and uh, focus on the climb. One of the things I like about the Holy Jim Trail is that the switchbacks are well graded. There's a lot of nice views along the way. You can see into the hills of the Santa Anas. And at some point, you'll get a glimpse up ahead. And the peak with the towers on it is Santiago Peak. That's where we're going. Just get into your rhythm as you go up the switchbacks here. It's tough, but it's not too tough. Anyone know what this is? I have no idea what that is. 
don't see a lot of those. To give you an idea of the trail, you can see it's a little overgrown, but definitely uh, easy to follow. And there's some evidence of trail work here, but not too bad. So far, the trail has been in excellent shape. And a uh, big thank you to everyone who worked on it because it's great. It's just the way I remembered it uh, before the fire. So that's pretty awesome. When you see the three mile marker, the switchbacks are largely done. We still have some uphill, but we're gonna head kind of straight up Holy Jim Canyon up to Main Divide Road. This is nice. I think it's a mariposa lily, butterfly lily. Lots of great flowers out. I think these are called uh, Coulter poppies here, but really, really beautiful. If you do this in the spring, uh, the flowers are out and it's a little bit cooler. And as you go up a little bit, you're gonna to start to see some pine trees. Now a lot of pine trees obviously burned in the fire, but uh, I think this is a Coulter pine. A lot of Coulter stuff here. Coulter was, uh, I think, Scottish when he came here, documented a lot of the plants. But as we continue up, you're gonna see evidence of the burn. It came right up the middle here, and it's easy to see. You can see all of this damage here. It hasn't all grown back well in the areas that aren't so wet. It's struggling a little bit more. As we continue up through the burn scar, you're gonna see up ahead is the road. That's where we're going, that's Main Divide Road. Before I get up to this next landmark here, I just wanna say a big thank you to everyone who supports the site. I could not do it without your help. Thank you, thank you so much. If you're liking the video, if you can give me a thumbs up, I appreciate it. And if you wanna know how to support, free guides like this, just go to hikingguy.com forward slash support. We enter a little shaded area, which is a welcome relief in the heat. We're gonna come out onto Main Divide Road. We're about five miles in. We're gonna make the right here to continue. All right, that was tough. We have time for a little bit of a breather here. I'm gonna go grab some water. Usually the water's running there, even if it's not running down below, but it doesn't always run here, so it's better just to bring all the water that you need. Then from here, we're going to head up Main Divide a little bit and uh, pick up the Upper Holy Gym Trail. I have no idea how that's going to be. First half was pretty good. I was surprised. I thought it was going to be a little bit worse, but uh, really, really great. So again, thank you to everyone who worked on that trail. And uh, yeah, let me get hydrated and uh, got some more work to do. After making the right onto Main Divide, we're just going to start hiking up there, passing the water. And even though this is a road, it was open to vehicles at one point it hasn't been in quite some time it's mainly a mountain biking and a hiking trail at this point you can see the road stretching up ahead of us and i'm going to go for about a half a mile and this part is really easy to pass by but when you get to the saddle you're going to look for a trail back up to the left somebody's marked it with a cairn here but it helps to have electronic navigation here especially because the beginning of it is a little bit overgrown as you can see here this is definitely uh, it was easy to miss before the fire. Now that's a little overgrown, it's even more easy to miss. But you can see there's a trail here. There is definitely damage. I could see already that this part of the trail got hit harder than the lower part. You could see all of the damage here. Now, when you get up to the T junction, you're not going to go left. That actually goes back down to the uh, area where we came up from the lower Holy Gym. It's a little more sketchy, so I re recommend going this way. Then we're going to start another series of switchbacks, about a mile of switchbacks up here uh, to the next landmark. So far, not too bad on the overgrowth. I'm just sitting here in this burn section. I think this used to be covered before it got burnt, but uh, nice place to rest. Check out the views on this uh, definitely tougher part of the trail. This part of the trail was definitely in worse condition than the lower Holy Jim Trail. There's no mountain bikers here going down, so there's some trees covering it, but you can clear it. And the views here, you get some views over to uh, San Jacinto, over to the east. Really, really nice as you go up towards the top. The switchbacks kind of stop, and you're going to come up to this big wide area. We're going to make a quick right and then a quick left to continue up Main Divide Road. And here we are. You can see quick right, quick left up by that fence, and we're good. Feels good to be off. Upper Holy Gym, definitely uh, overgrown in places, but not too bad. It was never really a big trail. 
it was always you know a little rough in spots but there's some spots that are a little rougher this time but i cannot tell you how happy i am to be back on this road which is normally not fun but close the traffic right now and uh we're just going to go up there's some shady spots so looking forward to this last stretch and making it to the summit the trail from here on out is pretty easy to follow and again, it's a road in name only at this point, but it is steep, so pace yourself. And eventually there are some areas of oaks and everything where you can get a little bit of shade, but at this point, it might be hurting a little bit. All right, I'm gonna take a break here. I'll tell you a good story about this area. Ever notice how the California flag has a bear on it? There used to be grizzlies here in California. No more, they're all gone, uh, including here in Southern California. It's kind of hard to imagine a grizzly here in this warm climate. You always kind of associate them with like the Rockies and stuff. But if you think about it, at that time, there were probably steelhead trout coming up the rivers, probably lots of habitat for them. But you know, people settled here and grizzlies and people and grizzlies and cattle ranchers don't always live harmoniously together. So the humans have figured out a way to kill all the grizzlies in California. Last one uh, that wasn't confirmed, I think it was in the 1920s up by Fresno, but the last confirmed grizzly bear kill in California was right here on the slopes of Saddleback Mountain. Uh, I think his name was like Moccasin Foot or something, but some ranchers tracked it in here and killed it because it was evidently stealing, I think, honey from a beekeeper. Uh, and now you can see its skull and its pelt live in some anonymous Smithsonian warehouse outside of Washington, D.C., kind of like the end of Indiana Jones. But uh, it's kind of sad. No grizzlies left. There's not even black bears here in this area anymore. The largest mammal you probably see here will be a mule deer, maybe if you're lucky. But that's the story. No more grizzlies in California, even though our flag has the bear on it. All right, when you see the gate, we're just going to go around it. This is the a little bit anticlimactic part, a little confusing with all these radio towers and everything. You'll see a sign here. Make sure you see that sign when you go back down. And I'll talk about getting back down a little bit later, but we're gonna go straight through here. Don't go to the left. We're gonna follow the trail straight through. A little confusing again, but we're going to the other side of the summit area. And what you wanna do is you wanna look for the structure that has a little viewing tower up top. That's where we're gonna go. And you can see here, this road goes up and around it. And you'll see a little trail once you go up the road here. This is the actual summit. And here we are at the summit of Santiago Peak. This is the highest point here in Orange County and in the Santa Anas. There is a survey marker telling you that you're in the right place. And uh, great views. To the north, you'll see Mount Baldy and to the east, uh, San Jacinto. And if you look around this building, you can kind of get glimpses of San Gorgonio as well. <sighs> All right, now we're done at the summit. We're gonna head back down the dirt road to the uh, intersection of the Holy Gym Trail. Now, when you get out of the complex here, don't go to the left. That's an easy one to go down by mistake. You wanna go down to the right. This is the one that we came up. Now, when we get back down here to this wide area where the Upper Holy Gym Trail came in, we don't have to go back down the Upper Holy Gym Trail. It's a little bit rough going down. I recommend just taking Main Divide, the road back down, close to traffic, uh, and you could just kind of cruise down, maybe a little bit longer, but much easier to do back on the downhill. And this section of Main Divide is much like the other sections that we've been on. Great views, nice cruisy kind of trail and uh, a very easy trail to follow. Heads up for mountain bikers who come burning down here once in a while. And here we are. This is the junction with Lower Holy Gym. You're just gonna make the right here and uh, head back down the way you came up. All right, let me tell you what you need to know in order to do this hike. First off, I have a lot of this information, including all the links and everything on my website on hikingguy.com. Just search for Hiking Guy Saddleback Mountain Hike and you will find it all here, all the links, the maps, the GPX file. You can download this, you can print it out, whatever you need to do, but it is all here as well. All right, let's talk about the drive to the trailhead because this is a little bit, uh, little bit intense, I think for people who have low clearance cars especially. Let me just say that I've done this hike dozens of times over the years and I've seen some crazy low clearance cars at the trailhead. I've seen like Nissan 300, was it ZX, those really low profile ones there. So. If they could do it, you could do it. It's been a little uh, little thrashed over the 2022, 2023 winter with all the precipitation. 
there are some sections that are paved, but there's a lot of it that isn't. And there's some short sections of extreme potholes that you just need to pick your way through if you have a low clearance car. So just a heads up, you'll see it's only three miles. It's saying 14 minutes. It probably will take you more like 20 minutes to get through here unless you have a four by four and you're barreling through. But that's that. Check the website before you go. Sometimes they close this road. They close some of the gates because of the bad weather, because of construction, because of whatever it might be. So go to the website, check it out before you get there. This hike is in the northern part of Cleveland National Forest, which is here. And I mentioned it's sort of in the shadow of the larger neighbors. Up here is Angeles National Forest. Over here is San Bernardino National Forest here and here. And we saw Baldy and San Jacinto over there as well. But here we are at the trailhead. Let me just zoom in. And here you can see the road that goes up. This is the road I just showed you on Google Maps. But we go up through this canyon here, up through Fall Canyon along the creek. Now, I like to break this hike up into three sections because it is a little bit longer. It just helps me mentally tackle this hike, breaking it up, chunking it. First section is the approach, and that's up Holy Jim Creek. And then we're going to get up to uh, where the falls turnoff was. And then we have the main climb on Lower Holy Gym right here. And then we have the last section on Upper Holy Gym and Main Divide. So I just sort of mentally break it down like this here. The first section, this approach, generally pretty flat, uh, gradually uphill. This is where the gate was, the official trailhead. And we're going to come all the way up sort of to the, the narrow end of Holy Gym Canyon. And then this is that trail split right here. This is where if we went off to the right, we would go to the falls, but instead we're going to the left up towards Main Divide Road, and we're starting the climb with all the switchbacks. One of the nice things, this is Gaia GPS uh, on the web, but one of the nice things is it has these little distances in here that tell you how long each one of these stretches are, just like the National Geographic printed maps. Um, but anyway, this is Guy GPS. If you want to use this, I have a discount code on my website. Just like just search for a hiking guy, best hiking gear, and you can get that discount code, which allows you to get all these premium layers like the wildfire layer uh, and download them offline. Not a commercial, but uh, I'm not working for them or anything, but handy to have. Anyway, we come up to Main Divide Road. We make this hard right, and then we take the Upper Holy Gym Trail uh, up now a little bit. A little bit steep here, a little bit steep in this section, and there is a trail on the map right here, which uh, I, I explored. It's definitely rough in spots, especially this initial climb, but you can do this if you want. This junction right here was where I showed you that big red X, and I said make the hard right here, but if you went down here, you would just go back down to the start. I also mentioned coming back down on Main Divide instead of Upper Holy Gym. So when you come back down, you can just go this way. It's a little bit longer. Um, but definitely easier to hike downhill on, and you'll come back out right here. All right, continuing on from the Upper Holy Gym, this is that big, wide, kind of flat area, parking area, and then we're just going up on Main Divide Road up to the summit, which is right here, and that's the hike. And if you remember, I showed you the summit was a little bit confusing. We're, we're coming into the summit uh, down here, we're coming into the summit right here, and then we're going through and across to the actual peak. So that's where it is. Now, you might have noticed there were a thousand bugs, if not more, attacking me during this. Uh, a lot of insects, not all the time. It's just everywhere this year here in Southern California in 2023. So I like to bring these little lotion packs of um, insect repellent and put them on and just reapply it. It's an easy way to not carry around a bigger bottle with me. Uh, this is a hike best done in the winter or when it's cooler out. I did it before this kind of crazy heat wave we're having now, but it was still very, very hot. It gets really hot here. Uh, usually there's not really a breeze here and, um, you know, it's just really hot. Temperatures into the hundreds are common when it's warmer out. So do it in the cool weather. I bring three liters of water. If it's really hot, you might want to bring four or five and cash one of those two bottles or two of those bottles on the way up somewhere on Lower Holy Gym Trail, so you have them coming back down. Um, otherwise, this is a backcountry hike, obviously, so bring all your backcountry gear. There's antenna towers on the top of the peak, but it's not, uh, they're not cell phone towers, as far as I know. I think they're repeaters for emergency services and things like that. I don't get cell phone service here, so you know, bring an in-reach or some kind of satellite communicator. I've been testing out that Motorola Defy, which is what I had here, 
Uh, I did a review on that. If you want to check it out, it's on my channel. But satellite communicator, backcountry gear. Uh, I also used Hoka Speedgoat 5s on this. Now, I tested those. I made a review video a while ago on my channel. Uh, the narrow toe box wasn't for me. Uh, I like the wide toe box like we used to have on the Ultra Lone Peaks. I use the uh, Topo Athletic Pursuit now, but I was trying out these Hoka's again. I got another pair, as some of you suggested, so thank you. Uh, you told me to get a half size larger and get the wide model, and I think that worked well. My feet felt much better than the narrow version. It's still not as wide as like a wide toe box shoe, um, and it has a little bit of drop, but I think Overall, it worked really well. So if you do want to get those speed goats, that's the move. Otherwise, just get a Stinson, which is a little bit heavier, um, but it seems a little bit wider overall. The Grizzly thing was really interesting for me. I always knew the last Grizzly was killed in Holy Jim Canyon, but when I dug deeper, I found all kinds of interesting information. Um, there's a grassroots uh, movement. I think it's just a couple people. I don't think it's a big deal, but uh, a proposal was put out by these folks to make Grizzly Bear National Monument, which would be here in Cleveland National Forest. And you can go to their website here. And they even made a little map that shows the proposed boundaries, which is essentially the Santa Ana Mountains, the northern part of Cleveland National Forest. Kind of interesting. It would have protected the area. I don't think it went far, obviously. And it's kind of strange to think of Grizzly Bears or Grizzly Bear National Monument being in this place that's very uh, not so grizzly bear, you know, to today's standards, but pretty interesting. Uh, another interesting thing I learned is that if you look at the flag of California, you'll see that the grizzly is walking on grass. And this is, uh, I forget the name, but it's, it's a wild grass that you find here in uh, the Cleveland National Forest on the Santa Rosa Plateau, just sort of south of where this hike is. There's native grasslands there, and this allegedly is that type of grass honoring the grizzlies, which I guess were once here in great numbers. So pretty cool. And it's not hard to kind of picture grizzlies being here in high numbers, uh, making trails through the chaparral, like little tunnels, almost like the Holy Jim. Holy Jim is sort of a tunnel in the places that are a little more grown. Um, easy to picture, kind of interesting. And, uh, you know, I'm glad there's not grizzlies there now because that would make it a whole different thing. Maybe I'm not glad. I don't know. If there were grizzlies, there were grizzlies. But Grizzlies used to be there. And I just say, you know, when I first moved to Southern California, hiking in Cleveland National Forest wasn't as exciting as hiking in the higher peaks and everything. But over time, I've grown to appreciate it a lot more. It's really a great place to hike. So if you're getting tired of Angeles National Forest or San Bernardino, when I say tired, you know, I never get tired of hiking in any of these places. But if you want something different, um, head down, do this hike. I also have some other approaches to Santiago Peak up Indian Truck Trail, which goes from the east side and also from uh, Maple Springs, which is another way to do it. And you can also bag Majesca Peak, which is the other half of Saddleback Mountain that way. Those are all on the website. So again, just search for Hiking Guy Saddleback Mountain and you'll find all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also have my gear guide, my latest gear up on the website too. Just search for Hiking Guy, best hiking gear, and you will find all of that there. All right, guys, thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you out on the trails.